My name is Steven Ritz, and I am a Bronx-born educator and resident. Here in the South Bronx, we're growing our way into a whole new economy, and that's beautiful. Where there are no jobs and no access, now we're creating it. Most of my kids come to me from foster care, homelessness, many have special needs. But when we started really making money at our farmer's market, the first thing our kids did is decided we were gonna sponsor orphanism. So as much as my kids received, they were able to give. I'm proud of them. My first group of kids came back today on their time to tutor the next generation of kids. So when you give kids experiences, you move them into spheres of success that they've never had. And most importantly, when they come here and get the skills that they need, they become employees elsewhere. We're planting seeds, seeds of hope, seeds of opportunity, and seeds of a new economy. Here in the South Bronx, we are harvesting hope and cultivating minds. Alrighty, so hello, PBL world. How cool is that? This is the world, and I am just so excited to be here. Um, if you're new, welcome. And if you're back, you know why you're here. And it's not for the gourmet food. It's for all of us and all we do. So welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know, I am from the South. The South Bronx. That's right. Right there. This little home, uh, this little gem, the Riviera, our beachfront here. Um, and it's home to some wonderful little cultural icons. 40% of the city's waste. A sewage treatment plant. 100% of the Bronx's waste. You know where this is going? A sewage pelletizing plant. Four electrical power plants and 60,000 diesel trucks a week that are bringing food to my city that leaves and goes elsewhere. But that's a whole other story. Holy crap. <laughs> Literally. Welcome to the neighborhood, right? Welcome to the neighborhood. These four pictures were taken literally six blocks from my K-12 school. Breathe deep, everybody. Nice. Mmm, picnic? Sure, why not? Let's bask in the toxic waste center. Nothing like walking past a medical waste transfer station and mmm, nothing like a brisk walk in a toxic neighborhood on a sunny, beautiful Tuesday morning here in Napa. My God. Throw in six strip clubs, four jails, six liquor stores, and no public library. It is no wonder my kids are the canaries in the coal mine. So I'm here to open your eyes today to a whole kind of way of new thinking, and I want you to get big and think big. And let me ask you, Napa, uh-oh, California water shortage. Is the glass half empty or half full? It's 100% full. Come on, teachers, it's 100% full. Two things my kids need. Clean air and clean water. We need a whole lot. So I'm here to open your eyes today to this mindset that I call endless resourcefulness. And I lost one of my tools. And what does endless resourcefulness mean? Well, in my neighborhood, it's simply a matter of taking garbage. We've got tons of it and turning it into things that we sell. Upcycling, being productive, being useful. Um, and I am affectionately known, there I am, as El Capitan de los Pollitos. For those of you from Wisconsin, yes, it's a cheese hat, but really it's my sustainable farming hat. But, just so you know. So I am El Capitan de los Pollitos. I have 875 in a K-12 school, 735 in a K-5 school, and 275 in a second opportunity high school where the average freshman is 19 years old. But what am I really? I'm a parent. I'm a resident. I'm an insurgent educator who has this fundamental belief that children should not have to leave their neighborhood to live, learn, and earn in a better one. And right where I live, damn it, that's where I'm putting my stake in the ground, in my neighborhood, so I don't have to leave somewhere else to go anywhere better. Now, the reality is, um, and you guys are way more tech savvy than me, we're living in a world of nature versus Nintendo. But four years after, five years after Jerome Ringo said this, kids aren't even playing Nintendo. What the hell do you have to buy them now to make them happy? I don't know, it's some kind of crazy upgrade. But the reality is in my community, and in my 30 years of teaching, Kids are getting fatter. They're getting sicker. The emergency room has become the primary source of health care for communities like mine. And that's not good for the 1% nor the 99%. 75% of the kids who I see labeled learning disabled would not be simply if their parents had good access to prenatal nutrition. And this is in America. We're talking America here. We're not talking a third world country. It's remarkable. 
The realities of my community are staggering, and there they are. Take a look. There it is. So welcome to Park Avenue. Park Avenue, the Bronx. That's the other Park Avenue. The highest rate of families in homeless shelters and single parent homes in all of New York City. 37% of my local residents are food insecure. Now, you can't read this and I apologize, but childhood poverty in New York City is 8%. In my neighborhood, whoop, 59. 59% overall. Now, the graduation rate in New York City is going up, 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 78%. In my neighborhood, it's going up too, 32%. Wow. So, welcome to my neighborhood. Two sides of the track, tough and tougher. Welcome to the hood. The reality is, you know, the cradle of inequality is probably the inequality of the cradle. And this is actually a picture I took on a recent home visit to think that these are the kind of cradles that would, no one here in this, in this room would want to see this for their child. But yet, this is the reality of my community. My K-12 school is four blocks from this, ladies and gentlemen. That's what my kids see every day going to school. Now, design or default, probably a whole other conversation, and I'll be delighted to have that. But that's what my kids see every day. And with schoolyards and playgrounds that look like this, let's move? Really? There? If what? You're a broken bottle or a stray bullet. But what's inspirational? What's aspirational about that? Absolutely nothing. And as jobs continue to leave big cities like mine, and we become wholly dependent on energy from other places, it is no wonder so many people refer to places like mine as a desert. So the one constant we know is change. And while constant is change, I posit that change has become the new constant. There'll be an upgrade tomorrow, I promise. There'll be a better looking me a version, better looking version of me coming soon, I certainly hope. So, the bottom line is this. Of course I like safe. I'm a public school administrator, but what I really like is transformational. I like equitable, and I like inclusive. And simply put, I'm not willing to accept the things I can't change, damn it. I'm gonna change what I can't accept. And for me, it starts in my neighborhood, and for me, it starts with seeds. So I am a people farmer. That's right, I am a people farmer, and the kids are my seeds. Some days I want to plant the seeds and plants, some days I want to plant the kids. Separate topic. But for the most part, I am a people farmer. And let me tell you about my kids. 100% of my kids are either homeless, foster care, adjudicated youth, English language learners, or special needs. Do I need to say that again faster? That's what I've got. I've been remarkably, in the back of my classroom in the South Bronx, what am I doing? I grow plants. Coolest thing about plants, no poop to scoop. Nothing that eats their young and no floaters at the top of the tank. It's absolutely remarkable. I love plants and for the most part, they will grow. Just don't tell the kids, I get away with lying a lot. And you see that my kids really, they love taking care of these plants because I lie to them a lot. But the kids develop relationships with these plants. You can't, they can't set them to fight each other. You can't put them on each other. So kids really love taking care of plants in the least likely of places. And so much so that my students and I cooked up six acres of blacktop. And there are videos of us breaking up blacktop to put in farms like this across all New York City. And you know, a big shout out to Dave, because Dave actually came to visit me a few years ago um, to actually walk this plot of land that my kids and I built. Um, and it's remarkable. So why am I here? Well, why are we all here? Because I think we're all united on these five basic principles. And I'm here today making sure that my reach forever exceeds my grasp. But why? Why do I love project-based learning? I'm going to tell you why I love project-based learning, because it teaches kids to take responsibility. And if they take responsibility, they own it. And that's awesome, because they own it, and we get the credit. How cool is that? And in my case, I get a lot of tomatoes, too. But for the most part, the kids own this. And that's the coolest. For me, it's about engaging stakeholders. It's about really growing my pedagogy. So when I learned that I could grow plants on a wall like this, literally the size of this screen, and have 700 tomato plants, me, the oldest sixth grader in the room that you'll ever meet, and here I am, that's me, I thought this was just totally cool and I had to do this. So literally, I gave birth to the first edible classroom in all of New York City. I wanted that, everything that we were doing outside, indoors all year round, aligned to Common Core, aligned to content area, aligned to the things that were gonna get kids to pass tests. And ladies and gentlemen, I gave birth to the first edible classroom in New York City, and this right here is my harvest. And somewhere along the way, I lost my little, uh, my little trowel, but that's my tool of mass instruction, people. 
a little trowel. In this big digital age, my tool of mass instruction is a trowel. Now this is not only a ticket to good health, it's a license for my print kids to print money. And in a community that's 37% food insecure, to have access to this where they need it most is totally cool. And these are my kids in my bulletproof school with bulletproof food making incredible, my heirloom students making heirloom sauce, I like to say. We started putting it right into the cafeteria, and I started aligning it with real project-based learning, things that align to Common Core, things that align to the test, things that kids could do. And lo and behold, we had academic progress of epic proportions. It was totally cool. And in the middle of somewhere that you never expected it, the South Bronx, my kids took to growing green plants. We started installing green roofs and green walls across the country. We started taking over ugly institutional buildings like mine. Because believe it or not, I have a school building with no windows. Imagine sending your kids to school with no windows. That's what I have. So we had these plants and we had this little problem that we needed to solve. Light. So we started focusing on LED technologies, real technologies that could change the world and really lead to living wage jobs, things that could never be outsourced. And then I aligned it to this amazing thing, a paycheck. That's right, a paycheck. Because I believe the greening of America starts with the greening of pockets, lettuce and cabbage in the pockets, then the greening of hearts, and then the greening of mind. And this right here is the youngest nationally certified workforce in America on the roof of the Bronx County Courthouse with the Bronx Borough President. Now, Borough President, statistically, what is it? Six out of 10 of my kids wind up going through the basement of this building in handcuffs. Here we are on top of the roof, celebrating with a green roof that we installed, the youngest nationally certified workforce in America. So much so that these kids started working in communities of privilege. We started outsourcing our labor. And to think that my kids from the poorest congressional district in America, with no access to landscape and nature, can start designing and installing landscape like this in privileged communities for living wage was a game changer. It was a game changer to what public education could be and why we should come to school and get up and go to work every day. And then it got even better. This is my version of what I call the Jeffersons, from the South Bronx to South Hamptons. My kids and I, we moved in. That's right. We decided we liked it out there. Yes, the white people are very nice. We like them. We wanted to spend more time with them, so we moved in. And this is from the South Bronx to the South Hamptons. We went out, we rented a house, and we started designing and installing roofs across the Hamptons. We're licensed, bonded, and insured, and started putting in these roofs. We grew the plants, we designed it, we sold every single piece. There's a hell of a markup on plants, let me tell you, just so you know. But the kids learned every aspect of business, and I will tell you this, my kids' pants stayed up all summer long. There was no crack on my shift, I can assure you that. So you may be asking, what do these walls do besides changing mindsets and landscapes? My, what I like to call my green graffiti, redefining what kids can do in the middle of the South Bronx. Well, this guy right here, Jim, he figured it out. He called me up and said, Steve, you know, your future farmers, let me tell you about them. They're showing up, they're responsible, they're dependable, they're there every day on time. They're a great workforce. And we started partnering that great workforce with another incredible natural resource, abundant in the South Bronx, abandoned buildings. That's right. We started working on abandoned buildings and reclaiming neighbor buildings in our own neighborhood, places that were formerly abandoned and forlorn, unproductive places, and turning them into aspirational spaces, places where kids could learn and live and make a living. This young man, the first in three generations to open a bank account. This guy from Africa, oh my God, let me tell you about Najee. Oh, Mr. Ritz, I love the technology. I'm going to send this back to Africa. He came here because his parents were hungry. He understands what it's like to walk six miles a day for water for subsistence farming. He speaks four languages, my most in-demand installer, literally in a suit and tie, going around working for the Board of Education as a technical advisor. The coolest success story in the world. But we started taking over and building out landscapes that look like this with interiors that look like this. And my program got a little popular. CNN came down to visit me. It was unbelievable. Uh, I only wish they interviewed me with a carrot so I could have said, what's up, doc? But <laughs> The remarkable thing is, this is absolutely unbelievable. Corny, yes, but it's unbelievable. But my kids get paid $17 an hour to take care of this landscape. $17 an hour, that's, that's a decent wage for my kids. And it inspires them to come to school. And more importantly, it gets them into communities where instead of them being looked upon as different and apart from, they are now welcomed and are a part of. So this whole, no, this whole notion, if you will, of a green economy, of building people together with a triple bottom line really has a benefit for the rich and the poor. We're together, we can all prosper. 
But most importantly, when my kids from the poorest congressional district in America can design, build, and install a green wall that looks like this and put it in the heart of Rockefeller Center for NBC, that's what we call in the South Bronx a si se puede moment. It sure as hell is. And most importantly, that living thing represents jobs today, tomorrow, and into the future. So I like to say it's scholastic, and there I am pushing a wall of what will soon be Pico de Gallo and Salsa right down the middle of Broadway, having the time of my life. But when the Bronx Borough President and State Senator come to my class, it's proof that the Bronx can change attitudes now. And my kids and I, we are poised, ready, willing, and able to change your mindsets because we want to grow something greater across the Bronx. And when my kids come out sometimes from very difficult situations, my adjudicated youth can come out and saw 100 gardens for handicapped children across New York City. That's the kind of inclusivity that changes everybody, that moves people apart from to becoming a part of. But most importantly, this is where the story gets really interesting. You see, because half the kids in this picture are homeless. And when my kids from the poorest congressional district in America started taking the money that they made from farmers markets and food sales and donating it to orphanages and earthquake victims and tsunami victims, I was like, wow, we can change the world. And literally, we realized that there was something green for everybody, and we gave birth to the Green Bronx Machine. We literally looked at every aspect of our life, where we were living, stranded it down, and decided how can we make projects, how can we affect change right where we live that would have a ripple effect all around the world. So in this age of STEM, 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 I like to talk about STEAM. And what does the A stand for? Well, the A stands for art, because everybody needs more art in their world, damn it. Everybody needs to make more art. So let's get out there and make art, no matter what it is. And everybody needs more aspiration, because no child rises to low expectations. So crank it up. I'm here to tell you, if you think you're working them hard, work them harder, because no one rises to low expectations. Nobody can and nobody will, so turn your game up and advocacy, because in my neighborhood, you best believe that every life matters and every kid matters. So I believe in growing citizens, and in my neighborhood, I want kids to be engaged and vote, because when my kids show up to vote in communities like mine and in marginalized communities, things happen. I bring 400 grandmas to the local, local council member, oh my god, they flip out. And that's what you can do in communities like mine. But what does it really look like? Well, we have a lot of garbage, right? So my kids and I, we started redesigning furniture. We started looking at our neighborhood, and this is a map of exactly where we live. Um, again, Dave's been there. It's so cool. This is my block. Welcome to the South Bronx. My K-12 school is right here. I don't think anybody wants to live on that block. It is hot as hell in the summer, cold in the winter. Every myth that you've heard about the South Bronx from drug dealers running from one side of the street to the other is true. And when it rains, all that water goes down the hill, and back here is that big pile of garbage I showed you before, and that goes out all around New York City. So, the kids and I, we got a little artistic and a little dreamy-like. We started using some of that cool technology that you guys are learning about, that map, that cool stuff, and dreaming and drawing. We got a little aspirational and advocate. We started writing grants. We started breaking ground, and two years later, later ladies and gentlemen, this is the new South Bronx. This is project-based learning. And where there were no businesses, there is now business after business after business, all locally owned. And we also got butterflies. How cool is that? But this is a place where I want to live, and this is a place I'm, called, I called, I'm proud to call home. So while I'm very much about reading and writing and teaching kids to count, teaching them what counts is critical too. And for me, A, B, C, Ds also translate into asset-based community development, growing citizens and growing community right where we live, the best project of all. And think, whether you live in this neighborhood or you live elsewhere, you're an absentee landlord or you're the people on the other side of the water, everyone benefits when my kids take roofs like these and turn them into roofs that look like these. Plus, we get butterflies and food. How cool is that? So the remarkable thing is Disney came to my neighborhood. Some of you may have seen me on Disney. And lo and behold, Disney came to the South Bronx to feature Hi, our work. Hi, I'm Steve Ritz. And I'm a science teacher from the South Bronx. And where I teach, kids have no access to locally grown, fresh, and affordable vegetables. My kids didn't even know where vegetables came from. So I started teaching my students how to grow their own food. And they loved it. Before long, we started the Green Bronx Machine. And lo and behold, in the South Bronx, we started a food revolution. Gardeners like these are spreading the word about fresh vegetables and feeding our own community at the same time. 
here we are, 30,000 pounds of vegetables later. We've got veggies popping up in every corner of the city. We found out we could grow food almost anywhere. Under bridges, on walls, in classrooms. And look, right here, four stories up, we're growing without soil. It's called hydroponics, and not only is it really cool, it's great for the environment. Our kids have learned how to build edible walls. What could be more cool than a wall full of food? Our motto is, si se puede. That means, yes, we can. And you can, too. Si se puede. Si se puede. Makes me want to go out and plant something right now. Those guys are so fired up, yeah. So next time you bite into a carrot, remember how much fun it can be to garden in new ways. It's bound to put a smile on your face when you pass, pass the, the plate. plate. So, pass the plate. Pass the plate is cool, but my kids are passing tests. They're doing amazing things. They're showing up, and yes, Disney came to the Bronx, and they got the hell out real quick. I will tell you, they stayed, they came, they made a video, and they got the hell out real quick. They did not stay. But what it did teach me is how much little kids spend time watching TV, because I wasn't aware of that, how literally TV is raising my children. So I changed focus and simply went from overage, undercredited youth to really little guys. And these are my future farmers getting involved in wonder and inquiry and aspiration. And when you start them young like this, you really, you're building on good habits instead of unpacking bad ones. In a neighborhood that was once known as Fort Apache, the only TPs you're seeing now are the ones we build to celebrate Native American history. And without a food stamp or a fingerprint, my kids are feeding themselves and their communities in ways we've never imagined. These are happy kids, happy families. Behold the glory and bounty that is Bronx County. Somewhere over the rainbow is a new South Bronx, and this is my schoolyard, and I invite you all to come visit. But for me, it's no more little Knicks and little Nets, or in your case, little Warriors, or right, Golden State Warriors, or whatever. No more little Yankees. I want little mushrooms, little broccolis. I want kids aggregating around what's good for them and healthy for them and sorting themselves around things that will benefit them. And I want every single child in America to know what food is, where it comes from, whether they live in a concrete jungle or outside of a shelter, to understand what food is and all the academics that go along with it, the measurement, the prediction, all that good stuff. So for me, when Jose starts showing me the details to cucumbers like this, and Omar and Henry tell me that carrots come from under the ground instead of through a Ziploc bag with a lady in a cafeteria yelling, next, those are the kind of moral victories I love. But for me, eating across the rainbow is not a bag of Skittles, damn it. It is healthy, fresh food. And my kids need it daily in school, so if I get them healthy, fresh school food when they need it most, I'm going to activate their minds. And if you activate their minds, you expand their palates. And if you expand their palates, you expand their vocabulary. And if you expand their vocabulary, you give them experiences they've never had. That's what public education is all about. That's what project-based learning is all about. Experience, engagement, ownership. And man, oh man, do the kids own this. Happy teachers, happy kids, happy families. Um, and most importantly, we started feeding grandparents because most of my kids are being raised by either grandma or foster care. So when you start putting healthy, fresh food in school for grandma, game change. Everybody comes in and you see all the grandparents were tutoring and signing up to vote and to get involved and to sign off on IEPs. I don't need more police in my neighborhood, not when grandma comes to school with that cane. I'm from the South Bronx, trust me. It is community managed. And most importantly, I have big kids teaching little kids how to shop, how to be producers and consumers. I'm doing it interculturally, interracially, and intergenerationally, teaching kids not to be that bottom rung on the consumer, but to be a producer, how to use their food stamps and benefits in a way that benefits all of us. So I like to say in the South Bronx, we're growing much more than food, we're growing justice. But on top of the four train, we're growing pumpkin patches. And at Thanksgiving, we get to eat them. For the rich and affluent, we travel and we install koi ponds. We're licensed, bonded, and insured. I'll gladly take your order. But these are my children of the corn, creating food awareness in the least likely of urban places, trying to grow something greater. We're looking at ways of resourcing recyclables, and here we are in California, into things that can really generate food and generate change, not only in our community, but around the world, like Haiti and parts of Mexico and the Philippines, where people are really food challenged. So, I don't expect every kid to be a farmer, I don't, but I expect them to read about it, write about it, blog about it, give outstanding customer service, and let me tell you this, when I tell the kids to be quiet, the plants are having sex, you can hear a pin drop. I'm thrilled to see kids pollinating plants instead of each other, and for me, project-based learning is what I like to call my version of plant parenthood in the South Bronx, that's right. Because if my kids are in school doing this, they're doing a lot of things that they don't know about, but they also learn how to pass the science regions. So let's talk data, shall we? 
With my kids, we've gone from 40% attendance to 93% attendance. 100% of my high school kids who finish the program graduate. And most importantly, in a community with no jobs, we've partnered towards 2,200 local jobs. That's what's up in a community we like are mine. right outside my school. One block from a strip club, an abandoned lot over there, two liquor stores right up the block. Welcome to the neighborhood. I am dean of students at a school here in the South Bronx. We're flooded with cheap options. The 99 cent menu here, the 99 cent menu there. Right here on this street, in this very restaurant where my wife and I got the motivation to help change kids' lives. Good morning, everybody. Have a great day. And it starts with classrooms. It starts with education. We're trying to teach kids where their food comes from and how they can grow themselves into a whole new paradigm of health, success, and opportunity. It smells good, right? It smells like plants. It smells healthy. That is a vertical wall where you could plant vegetables. Classrooms are changing. Kids are changing. The waistlines are changing. Block by block, we're changing the way people think about the places they live and what they want to be in life. And for these kids in this community, that's transformational. What are we going to do with these plans? We're going to... The eyes of the future are looking back at us, and they're demanding that we get this right. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. You're not going to stop me. No, you're not going to stop me. So these are the kids. This is my classroom. Where does the food go? Zero miles to plate right to the school cafeteria. The rest gets delivered to local soup kitchens where sadly most of my kids get their third meal of the day, but we're building concentric circles of community built around healthy, fresh food. Oh, we're stepping it up across the Bronx, and I like to say no school uniforms or sneakers were ever ruined on my farm. You can keep those precious sneakers clean. That's right. And the basketball court can coexist with the food farm in the middle of the South Bronx and Blackfield, Brownfield, Toxic Wastefield. My kids and I are proving in the South Bronx we can grow food efficaciously and profitably all year long, aligned to outstanding school performance. How cool is that? Our flower sales put bake sales to way to shame and dollar that makes so many more dollars and so much more sense. The markup on plants is huge. Plus, every plant that's not get sold, God got sold, God forbid if the kids don't beat you down, gets planted in our own community. So we're taking ownership. We're changing the way and where how we live. But when you can take gang kids and put them together for something like this, that's the promise of public education and second opportunities that we all believe in. So um, these are the kids, happy families, happy Bronx, welcome to the Bronx, Bronx vegetables, all kinds of, I grow seven kinds of mint in my class. It's in it's my intellectual Viagra, I tell the kids, and when their breath stinks, I tell them to have some, you know, and they respond to that. But most importantly, when you teach kids about nature, you teach them to nurture. And when we teach kids to nurture, we as a society collectively embrace our better nature. So I like to say we're creating a new recipe and we're cooking it all up in the South Bronx. And I there started focusing on my next project, which was using these tower gardens to get them food. into classrooms no, so that everybody could be a farmer. Food. Kids are getting fatter. They're getting sicker. I have 200 pounds sixth graders. And to me, that's appalling. I can't accept that. It's just not right. Listen, when kids lose weight and they go home and they're bringing food home to their families and grandparents are getting involved and parents are getting involved and people are talking about what's going in their bodies. Plant by plant, classroom by classroom, we're changing outcomes and we're changing destinies. kids who are teachers now. I have kids who are aspiring to things and jobs and places that they've never imagined. That to me is exciting. Put a seed in the ground. Put a seed in the ground. It's that simple. It literally is that simple. So put a seed in the ground. You see, because in communities like mine, Fast food is killing us. We don't need more cheap food. We need healthy food. Being broke is too expensive in America. And my kids are finding out that we can grow and sell food and do all kinds of new technologies that we've never imagined. I like to say that 30,000 pounds of vegetables later, my favorite crop is organically grown citizens, graduates, members of the middle class, kids who are going to college and who aren't going to jail. That to me is what's up. So we grow from lots like this to lots like this, freestanding, self-sustaining entities that generate jobs and property value and feed people. How cool is that? So no matter what city you're from, no matter where you're from today, world, I believe that we are all dedicated to making health a quality reality. 
And you know, in my part in New York, I'm doing my part to grow something greater. I don't see walls, I see places to plant food and grow food and create awareness. We're taking abandoned buildings and with zero dollars of infrastructure, we're creating indoor food factories where veterans, kids, everybody can work all year round creating jobs, doing nutty things. But as it relates to project-based learning, when you give kids ownership of where they live, they love it. They get involved, they get engaged, and you're able to really be reflective and make it, as Sam says, very authentic. That's about as authentic as it gets. As Michael's backpack says, just do it. So I have a lot of energy, hopefully you'll plug into it. And my motto is simple, cultivate, propagate, replicate, repeat. It's just that simple. I wanna show you five days in the life of a seed. Some of you may remember this from when you were a little kid. I wanna show you five days in the life of my Green Bronx machine. We show up. We plant, we measure, we get going. That's five days worth of growth. 25 days later, that's a whole lot of lettuce, a whole lot of cabbage. I like to say we're Bronx proud and we're farming and you know it without even a tractor. Together we're making a huge difference in the lives in of the kids South in the Bronx, South Bronx. The poorest congressional district in America. So to be able to be part of the revitalization of this community is everything I've ever aspired to do. Who knew we could get kids to come to school for the privilege of farming? 100% of the students who come to us are either dropouts already or they're on the way to dropping out. Our kids show up because it's fun. The way he does it, he's stern. If you want to have fun, if you want to be part of this program, you also have to produce in other subjects. The real life applications of this program transcend all level of academics. There's reading, writing, math, science. And the light at the end of the tunnel is a job. We're growing food. They're working in kitchens. They're working in supermarkets. They're buying, grading, and rating produce. They're aspiring to be chefs in restaurants, creating food and dishes they never imagined. I started going to school more, and things started getting more interesting because of this program. And now I am building green walls and green roofs all over the globe. Other states and even other countries are looking to Bronx kids to train them in the technology that Steve has trained our kids. I'm not willing to accept the things I can't change. I'm going to change the things I can't accept. We're starting through Steve Ritz to tell the new Bronx story. We're no longer the borough that just made it. We're the borough that's leading the way. And I am the luckiest man on the planet. Progressive people are everywhere. Stephen Ritz is one of them. Learn more at apronprojects.com. So I'm here sharing my passion. I hope you can share yours. Please like my kids on Facebook. We have a nutty Facebook page. My kids love meeting all of you from all over the world. So the kids run the Facebook page and the website. I'm on Twitter. But please like my kids on Facebook. They'll keep you up to date. It's a lot of fun. We've connected with people all over the world. And that's the power of some positivity. Um, I do have a TED Talk, um, one from several years ago that went viral. And since that time, I've been able to travel the world. I'm looking around. I've met people from Kentucky. I've met people from Kansas. I've met people from Wisconsin. I mean, to think that one crazy man in a bow tie from the South Bronx can make the front page of the Columbia newspaper. And when you think about what the relationship was between Medellin and the South Bronx when I was a kid, oh my God. But that's the power of project-based learning. So most importantly, keep kids out of places that look like this. Teach kids that their spending, their spending dollars count and that they could be active stewards of their money. Teachers, model a healthy plate, grow healthy food, vegetate kids, teach them about entrepreneurial skills. This is what matters, and this is what moves them and moves the needle for public schools, and you get all the credit. It's totally cool. But love them, and that's really what this is all about. Because kids need love, and they respond to what's real and authentic. As we all know, there's a war on in public education, charter schools, public schools, private schools, Common Core. It's shameful to see buildings that are decimated and looking like this and look like this when my kids come in and we just build them out and turn them into something like this. Freestanding entities that generate job, health, wellness, and prosperity for all of us. So the eyes of the future are looking back at us and demanding that we get it right. And nowhere does that really speak more to me here than in California with the water crisis and some of the biggest issues of the day that we are facing as a nation. But we're here at PBL, and this is our moment. We are Mexa, Cans, America, Cans, Dominic, Cans, African American, Cans, and this is our moment. We need to go from a nation of being red states and blue states to a nation of green states, living eloquently and ecologically in line with nature, doing what's good for all of us. 50 years later, 
Civil rights remains the biggest issue facing not only this country, in the, but the world. And if you strand it out, it becomes education and the environment. And that's the two biggest points of entry for project-based learning that you could ever imagine. Um, simply put, it is easier to raise healthy children than fix broken men. And that's the focus of my work. Yes, that's the focus of your work. Thank you for nodding so efficiently. And together, here, teachers, we change lives. That's what we do. Teachers change lives. And nothing is more important to me than getting in there and changing lives. My name is Stephen Ritz, and I am CEO, Chief Eternal Optimist of Bronx County. We're going to actually grow our own lunch. We're going to grow our own food today. We're going to go from seed to plate. A towel garden is like this plant, but you don't need soil. And then the water comes up, and then it comes down and rain on the roots. Adults think, you can't farm in the South Bronx. Tell it to these kids. They're farming. For so many, Food is the problem, yet for all of us, food is a solution. We have some of the highest rates of juvenile diabetes and juvenile obesity in the nation, and we can change that. We absolutely have the power to change schools in this generation. I think I still see the seed. That, that happens. Exactly. You mean I can pass it around and they can see the seed absolutely. in the plant? My job is to teach kids how we can grow food. And I'm asking everyone to roll up their sleeves and get a little dirty and grow something greater. He lets us plant stuff like salad, cucumbers, tomatoes. My fourth and fifth graders came into a classroom with no windows to build a tower garden and literally turned it into a farm. And we talked about how healthy food builds healthy minds and healthy bodies. And where are we doing it? Right here in school. So did everybody plant a seed? Yes! Yeah. Yeah! The excitement and the joy that these little kids feel putting a seed in the ground and watching it blossom. OMG, as they say, this is their moment. I think he cares about us a lot and he wants us to learn and have fun at the same time. I'm not a farmer, but I'm planting. I'm planting seeds. He always says that seeds are like people because they need love and they grow and grow and grow to be successful people. To use 21st century technology, to generate food and to create this beautiful thing to sit by that you can actually eat is game changing. It's empowering. They're growing. The plants are growing and they're responsible for it. And when they know they can grow their own, they really start changing the way they see their relationship to the world and their place in it. This is delicious. Oh, We're going to eat it. I want it. So do I have like the coolest job in the world or what? I have pH patrol, plant police, leaf monitors, you name it, I've got everybody. But you see these little guys, we had a crazy dream, these fourth graders. And these fourth graders and I, believe it or not, we farmed our way straight to the White House, right into the White House kitchen, remarkably. Talk about a project, how cool is that? We went from the projects to a very good project, the White House. And in fact, this year, we actually had the White House chef come to my school. And we actually have, we have people here from Mexico. Melody, I don't know where you guys are, but people I've met in this very room. We had kids come from Mexico, charter schools, public schools, and private private schools come to my school to cook with the White House chef. It's so cool. We're calling it from Hope to the Pope in the middle of the South Bronx. And yes, I got to meet the Pope Stephen Rich, because Green Bronx, Green Bronx Machine is dedicated to project-based learning 24-7. literally grow food in school aligned to Common Core. So we're not only growing healthy kids, we're growing healthy academic performance. We don't expect kids to be farmers, but we want them to read about it, write about it, blog about it, do the science, the math, and along the way, discover what healthy food is. Healthy kids are at the heart of healthy schools, and healthy schools are at the heart of healthy communities. And in a community that is food challenged and has a lot of health issues, we believe we can grow ourselves into new opportunity and academic success. We are 21st century solutionaries right in the middle of the South Bronx, and we are partnering with private schools, public schools, to show people that the Bronx can change attitudes now. And we're out to change America now, because as the health of the South Bronx goes, so goes the health of New York City, New York State, and the nation. 30,000 pounds of vegetables later, grown in the South Bronx, my favorite crop is organically grown citizens, graduates, members of the middle class, kids who are going to college. That's what this is about. We are growing a new economy.
Indeed we are. So I believe that this notion of sharing, oh, my great idea. So inspired by this, I just want to share with you my latest, greatest project, and I'll be off real quick. But in the middle of the South Bronx, in the poorest congressional district in America, I have this crazy notion. And I believe that we can change the way kids eat. I am building the National Health and Wellness Center in a 100-plus-year-old building in an abandoned library because I believe that we can change the way kids eat, we can change the way we learn, and together we can change outcomes in this and future generations. This is my abandoned library as it started. This is what it's going to look like, where we are going to send kids home with 100 bags of groceries a week, 52 weeks a year. How cool is that, using this remarkable tower garden technology? So my kids can go from impossible to I'm possible. And remarkably, they believe in me. Since we've started this program just this year, you want to talk about pedagogical success, out of class time and behavioral incidents have been reduced in my school by 50%, which means teachers get to teach. Kids are going to class. And on five of the most critical areas of the school report card, we've taken a troubled and failing school and moved it from developing to proficient simply by instituting this whole notion of project-based learning, of authenticity, of really being reflective as to what we do. My goal is to literally have these kids go home with 100 bags of groceries per week. This is the prototype that we're actually building, which I believe will become the new school library around the nation, the new health, National Health, Wellness, and Learning Center. I believe we're, we're going to align it to Common Core, and it will become the green line for success so that I can send the first cohort of South Bronx children to the Bronx High School of Science because zip code and skin color should not determine outcomes in life. And we as teachers know that. So it's our job. And that's why I'm so happy and so proud to be a part of this um, and to be here with you guys today. Um, I have grown up in this room. I came to this room a few years ago as just a little seedling. And I'm here today, and I'm so happy to unveil the National Tower Garden Challenge. And that's just one of a zillion projects you can do. But to think that this piece of technology in your classroom can change lives and change health outcomes is remarkable. I believe it's going to be a prototype that we'll see spread all around the country through the nation. And if I could have got the kids to make me a bitter bigger, better slide, it would have gone all around the world. But I had another TED Talk where the kids and I unveiled this. And the kids got a standing ovation, so you should check that one out. And I just want to share with you as I get ready to close that it's all about perception, people. That's what this is all about. Because there are some people who see this. And then there are some people who see this. But you are at the Buck Institute world, and I am here to tell you that opportunity is now here. So embrace the moment, because this is your moment. I am here today with you because of the work that I do with them. So in my class, we say, let us turn up the beat. I'll repeat that in case you didn't get that. Let us turn up the beat. And I'm going to ask all of you to say along with me. Let us turn up the beat. It's absolutely remarkable. You see, because the ideas here that you're going to see planted together, we can really change the world and do something amazing. So is the glass half empty or is it half full world? It's a hundred percent full. That's right. This little guy, it's not easy being that green. But 45 be years later, this little frog has put a lens on sustainability, good. on that projects and learning that has changed the world. Good. So even though we're all little tadpoles today, I want each and every one of you to embrace your inner frog and take that great green leap. Do something bold and courageous. Get out there and do something nutty. Embrace your inner green roof. Here I am in the middle of Harlem growing corn. Embrace your inner greenhouse. There I am with a green wall under a subway train in the heart of New York City. That is the US State Department coming to visit my kids in the South Bronx and they never come for the good stuff. But I'm here to tell you as I tell my kids every day, anything is possible. Teach them, plant a seed, work with the little ones. Every child in America needs to know where their food comes from. And remarkably, my kids are getting access to clean air and clean water because they're growing food. How cool is that? We've started a movement. I'm told that Upworthy is releasing a film either today or tomorrow, so we'll keep you posted. But to think that I got on the Today Show simply because I'm eating my way to good health is absolutely crazy. And with this tower garden technology, 
I want to show you what my new vision is for the South Bronx because this isn't Photoshop, ladies and gentlemen. This is the new South Bronx. Are you ready? Get set, grow. This is 24 days of project-based learning with my kids in school. How cool is that? 24-day-old living lettuce. Delicioso! We're not working harder, we're working smarter in the South Bronx and making sure everyone gets credit. So my kids and I, we are creating this whole new way to get to our personal Sesame Street, our own side of paradise, and we've kind of figured out a recipe for success. So no matter what you do, design, build, and transform. Social sustainability and living wages at the heart of innovation, and for me, that's what this is all about, so that together, we can all prosper, win, win and win. The projects that my kids and I are doing, I'm just a nutty man in a bow tie with no agricultural experience, are really creating attention from around the world. We're getting to meet Bill Clinton. I got to meet Bill Clinton. To think one man in a bow tie could meet him is nuts. And to think that I'm a top 10 finalist in the Global Teacher Prize is insane. And in fact, we have another one in the room. So everyone, a round of applause for Cameron. He's a top 50 finalist here from Australia. That's what the power of this is all about, ladies and gentlemen, where anything is possible. And for a guy who can't even use a laptop and a remote control, to think I'm on the cover of Innovation and Tech next to Dean Kamen and an astronaut, oh, my mother's so proud. But it's nuts. That's the beauty of project-based learning. Ladies and gentlemen, my story is insane. And I, myself, have gone from impossible to I'm possible simply by eating the food that I grow with kids in school. And along the way, I found two new friends, Zeus and Apollo. So I'm bringing sexy back with my kids. And there I was in the White House saying one day I had a dream, but here I am. So if I can, you can, we can, we are Americans, Mexican, African American. To me, these kids are so important. I know they're important to you, and that's why you're here. That's why we're here. And as we focus, some of us are focused on the graduating class or just recent graduations. I want to focus on the graduating class of 2026. Look at those little kids. Oh, come on, collect. And I got to tell you, I'm partial to the wrestler. Any kid who can get in a hat like that and say he wants to be a wrestler, he's my kind of guy. But Superman isn't coming. I, me, you, us, we are the ones that these kids are waiting for and they need us to grow the biggest pumpkin ever. So when I say people, you say power. People, people. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to urge everyone to take responsibility and join me. Get involved, take one bold step so that together we can all prosper. Please embrace this mindset of endless resourcefulness. I come from a place where we have everything to gain and nothing to lose. And now that you know more, I expect you to care more. And now that you care more, I expect you to do more. So make just one simple change and do something great. Hell, we're teachers. We're not the ones who talk about life as it is or life as it could be. We are the ones who teach children to make life as it should be. From that to that. And in my lifetime, we have gone, I don't ask why. Asking for permission is begging for denial, and I refuse to be held back. So don't ask why. Get out there and do it. Go from this to this, from this to this, and from this to this. Because if I can, you can, we all can. We are Americans. And no matter what you do, remember that deep inside Earth is this amazing thing called art. So get out there and make plenty of it. And my final caveat is this. How we walk with the wounded speaks far greater than how we sit with the tall. And that's the biggest challenge of our educational system today. So get out there and make all those kids great because we owe it to them. In dark abandoned classrooms in the middle of the South Bronx, people, I am growing food. And if I can, you can, and I urge you to. But no matter what you do, please get out there and take time to smell the flowers, especially if you grew them with your kids from little seeds like I did. How cool is that? My name is Steve Rich. I'm from Green Bronx Machine, and I am the world's biggest fan of project-based learning. And I owe my success to all of you and to the wonderful staff here and to this notion that together we can grow something greater. So continued success to all of you. Thank you, thank you so much. God bless you. Grow something greater. And as we say in the South Bronx, 
sí, se puede. No pare, sigue, sigue for my friends in Mexico. Thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you. And a big round of David found me. So you got to give credit to David. Thank you kindly. Um, I'll be here to talk about the technology during lunch.